Cook and Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. We're in Manchester here uh, for the press conference for Flanagan against Zapida. With me, I have promoter Francis Warren. How are you, Francis? Extremely excited to be here, Cook. Extremely excited. So, the facts. No, Hard facts. No one from Manchester uh, has won a world title since Ricky Hatton. No, I think Mr. Quigg, who's, I think he's hails from Berry, Berry is the closest. Yeah. Don't want to, you know, ignore, ignore Scott's achievements. But Terry will be the first for all those years. Um, me and you both had proper haircuts back, you know, when, when, Ricky, uh, when Ricky won his world title. <laughs> We're getting a bit old, Coke. And um, it's going to be a fantastic night. I think um, Terry does well, you know, well deserves his, his shot. And um, we've been very patient since he beat Stephen Ormond. And uh, waiting for his date. As you can see, he's in already in terrific shape. You know, I don't think he's been out of the gym really uh, too lot for too you know, too long in between waiting for this. But he's got a big, big challenge on the 11th of July um, in uh, Zapida, who's some, something of a not knockout artist. He's had 23 wins out of 23 fights, 20 knockouts, and 16 of those within three rounds. So. If there's any indication as to what Terry can expect, I think you just have to look at those numbers. And um, I think Terry obviously will be doing his homework on uh, on boxing rather than coming to have a tear up. And um, I'm hoping that, that the occasion and the and all you know a sold out venue won't um, won't let Terry Terry's game plan change because he can box phenomenally well. Um, you know, Stephen Orman tried to draw him into a bit of a scrap and he wouldn't have it. Terry he boxed him and frustrated the life out of uh, Stephen Orman to a point where he had to you know, break the rules to try and upset Terry. And um, you know, fight ended how it ended. But uh, all in all, it's, there's no easy fights at this level. And um, if he wins the, the world title on the 11th, hopefully when he wins the world title on the 11th, it's um, going to be a case of job well done. <coughs> Sorry. And, um, Congratulations, world champ. Interestingly, I learned, I only knew this today, that there hasn't been a British lightweight world champ. English. English. Oh, sorry, English, yes. There has been, obviously, there was Ricky Burns and there has been a couple of others, but from Britain, rather. Did, did Gavin Reese? Gavin Reese. Did he win it at lightweight or? Oh. When he beat, he beat Silly, didn't he? Lightweight. Lightweight. Lightweller, yeah. Lightweller? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone's, you know someone's going to be like, if we're wrong, I'm, I'm sure it Listen, was a Listen, you can't say much without people you know, get, jumping on board, so whatever, you know, whatever. Do you know what? Just stay there, stay there, don't go, go on. on. Don't move, right. So we're going to roll this, right, I'm going to just Google. I'll tell you a story I'm, in the meantime. You, yeah, you just, I've got it here, go on, you tell us a random story. I'll tell you a random story. Oh, there's so many random ones. Did you get a cup final on Saturday? No, I was at the O2, but I watched it on the telly. I watched it in a, in a Hereford pub. You didn't go? No, no. Hereford I was in. Just before I check this, I'm pretty sure you're right. It was at like, well, I... Fingers crossed. Otherwise we're going to have to restart the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was that. Right, why can't I find him? God, this, is, this is an awkward silence. Only thing that make it more like awkward, Kogan, is if you were naked. Super lightweight, yep, yeah, lightweight. There you go. We were right all along, we didn't Wee, even have to do that. Wee. How can I not know that? So, yeah, be, Sorry, going Gavin. back to it, Flanagan, your yeah. first English, English. English fighter to win uh, the uh, full world title at lightweight. So, um, again, you know, it's a little bit of a history making fight. And, uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, there's certain fight cities in the UK and uh, that, that get your, your juices flowing. And Manchester is definitely one of them. Um, very, very passionate supporters of, of, of our sport and, and uh, you know, just love putting shows on up here. Never been to the Velodrome though, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, hearing, hearing it in action, you should say. You'd imagine it would give a good, good uh, atmosphere off, off because of the shape of it. A lot of top talent on the bill, Paul Butler uh, in a, mm. well, it's a kind of a, a comeback fight, you Don't could call say. It a comeback. 
Don't call it a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. First come fight back, after a comeback would suggest that he'd been, been away hiding and, uh, and he was so right. distraught with his get, first by getting fight beat. after suffering his first defeat That's, of his yeah. career. It's, uh, it's, it's his, he's, on, he's, on, he's looking to get back on the winning, winning track rather than the comeback track. So, uh, you know, Paul had a very disappointing night, very, very tough night against Tete, but I think Tete is one of those guys that will, um, will, will continue to get better and better. And um, I think Tete can go up at least two weight divisions and cause anyone problems. Um, and I think uh, I think Paul, you know, in no, in no way, shape, or form did he disgrace himself. He got caught with a massive uppercut, um, you know, and, and Tete frustrated the life out of him. Stuck to his, Tete stuck to his game plan fantastically well. It wasn't because Paul had a necessarily bad night. Zelani just didn't let him do anything. And um, but you know, Paul sitting up at that top table today with his you know, chest out, puffed up, head held high, and um, and getting getting back at, getting back in the ring where he. Um, we, we all know what he can do. What a fantastic talent he is. Um, and, you know, one defeat doesn't, doesn't signal the end by any stretch of the imagination of, of anything. So, uh, you know, especially at that level, you know, he keep, he keep coming. And, um, and I think he, uh, we'll, we'll see Paul with the world title shot, hopefully again, but before the end of the year. Um, sorry, I've just had an afterthought there, Francis. Um, Gavin Rees is Welsh anyway. <laughs> 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 even if he had won, he? It, oh really? Oh, of course. He, he would have won. Oh. Even if he had won it, at, um, Gavin. Like, when we're both talking about Ricky being Scottish, and, yeah, what a mug off, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. We'll leave it all in. We'll leave it all in. We'll leave it all we're in. only human. Oh, Come really, on, yeah. we're only human. Human error. Human error. Um, but it was like well, all right. It was like well, all right. It was. Like, well, it was at one forty. So, but he's well shit. Wouldn't have counted anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Billy Joe Saunders will return uh, in a ten rounder for his uh, first fight back since. Uh, a great fight with Eubank last year. Mm. Um, I ain't got to go into, I've already spoke to your dad on numerous yeah. occasions about why this fight yeah. ain't happening, etc. But just to point out, it is a shame that the rematch isn't massive happening. Massive shame. It is a massive shame. And especially for the reasons, you know, as, as you said, you've documented them well with, with my dad and uh, as to why it's not happening. Um, and it's, it is a massive, massive shame. But, you know, Billy Joe's got, a career to, to, to pursue and ambitions of his own to pursue so you can't sit around waiting for things to happen that to be honest should, shouldn't, shouldn't be a difficult one to make at all you know if you you know if you, if you, if you get defeated in, by, by something in, you know, in your life let alone in, let alone in boxing you want to get straight back out there and put it right and Eubanks Jr. had the, the opportunity to get straight back out and with you know with, with the credit of, of beating Chudlov for that interim title you know, he got back back on the horse, won that world title, or well, the interim world title, fantastically well, and could have gone straight back out and, and fought Billy Joe and, and aimed to to put to you know what he says was was uh, you know not a bad decision, but you know the, a, a points defeat that Eubanks thinks he could still have gone, have gone his way, but he had the opportunity to go out there and, and put it right when he didn't do it. So as a from a business point of view, it's a, it's a massive shame and a real disappointment. From a from a spectator point of view, it's, 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 it's again it's, it's, it's hugely disappointing. And um, I think I think Billy Joe was relishing the chance to put to for, for once and for all to say, I am better than you. I did beat you the first time, and I'll definitely beat you the second time. But you know we're going to move on. And um, he's still number one with the WBO, um, and he'll, he'll be fighting for that WBO world title this year. Someone tweeted me the other day, they said, you're so biased towards Saunders. Um, it, your whole coverage was around Saunders and the reasons why the fight isn't happening has all been Saunders' side. And I didn't really want to get into it again, but if anyone's watching or that person's watching it now... Why don't you just tweet in the video, Bill, man? But they if, don't want to do interviews with us, so I can't... No, 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 tweet that person. Yeah. Send that, send that interview that my dad did with you at the Arsenal. Mm. About the, you know the situation with the WBA title and the WBO number one. That's that's I think the main main factor in it. Yeah, but they're saying that it's your because obviously your dad's side is still Billy Joe's side. So they're saying that I haven't got a side from Chris Eubank Jr. But they don't, I'm just trying to point out they don't want to do interviews with us as it currently stands. So I saw you go up to, to senior and say right, let's try and sort this out so we can get both sides across. And Eubank Senior tried to give you a lecture at the O2 in the cinema, didn't they? Correct. Tried to give you some sort of lecture on how to behave and the decorum of this, and you know how to be a young gentleman and all this. 
And then you said, well, can I have the interview? And he just said, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have to say, first hand experience good. You, know you have tried pretty hard to, tried. To, get, to, get, you know, to get back in the, the Eubanks good books, but they don't seem to want to know. And you're not, you, know, you're not, you, know, you get plenty of other footage from every other fighter on the planet. So, um, you know, you, you're a broadcaster. You're not having to chase after, chase no, after no, one individual. It'd be great it, if they would do it. I'm sure uh, tomorrow if they rang up, you'd go down and do it. 100%. But Balls in their court. As it currently stands, they don't want to win. Senior said to me You've got that to put up the I lights swear, swear too much in interviews. Is that what he said? He said, he said you swear too much in interviews. And I, I, the first thing I thought, do you know what? I thought, oh, Chris Eubank uh, Senior watches our videos. That's what I thought. That's the first train of thought for me. I thought he watches them. She said, how do you know? Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> how do you know? No, listen, I quite like the old man, to be honest. I think he's... A, I like both of them. Know. I think both Chris's are uh, absolute. They are, they are gents. But, um, you know, it's just, uh, they just, they've got their ways. Which hopefully no one, one else will ever understand. Hopefully one day we saw that anyway. Um, but um, Jack Cattrall also on the bill. Mm -hmm. Cattrall inspiring a couple of unknowns in Canelo. And know, Mayweather and Canelo. Apparently he's been... He's, well, you can see his, his confidence. He just looks... Um, you know, it's not, obviously not just those spars. He's, he's, he's 22. He's, he's gone out there. I mean, he's unbelievable. Lee Beer's got very, very some impressive. great contacts out it's there. Very, very impressive. And, and what Lee's... How Lee's developing Jack... Um, is, uh, is, is is fantastic and going out and sparring Mayweather and Canelo and coming back and being so cool about it. Yeah, you know, sparred them. It was all right. You know, it's yeah, kind it's of like well, do you know what I mean? Most, take it in his stride. Yeah, no, but it's, it's really, 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 um, it's really good to see. And uh, I, it's, I think it, you know, it's going to be very difficult to start make, making matches for Jack because I can't see many many guys in this country want to fight him. Um, so it's going to be. Uh, and his style as well makes it very, very, very exciting to watch. There's no, there's no. Uh, it's, it doesn't give anything away. It doesn't waste many shots. Um, he's obviously not phased by going to other people's backyards. I know it's only up the road, Liverpool, but for a 21, as, well, 20, well, at the time, 21-year-old going to knock out Bruff and Tom Stalker in their own backyards, it's, you know, it says a lot about him. And, um, and then I've been on a plane and going to the States for two months to go and spar with the likes of those guys, especially around the sort of time it mm. was. It wasn't just like he was just going out for a spa. He was going to spa Mayweather in the, what was being billed as the, the, the biggest fight of all time. Mm. So, you know, Mayweather's obviously going to have been at the top of his game, and it turns out he was from the performance. Um, so, you know, and Jack's come back and there's not a mark on him. And he just, you know, he doesn't give anything away. And uh, he's not phased by it. And looking forward to seeing him on the 11th. Absolutely. People always ask for more interviews with you. Do they? Yeah. Because you're kind of heir to the throne of the Warren Empire. Heir? Heir. You take the piss. Heir. <laughs> heir to the throne. And actually, it's split between about four of you, isn't it? Yeah, there's loads of us. There is, isn't there? There's loads. Six of us. Got three, four brothers, two sisters. Or three brothers, two sisters. Oh, I always split between 60 of them. Yeah. But no, obviously... Uh, George is, uh, George is, is uh, Mr. Box Nation. And, um, I thought that was Bunt. <laughs> George, George works his, uh, his, his absolute socks off. And he's uh, very, very, very good at what he does. And I uh, uh, love having him, or love, being in, work, love working with him. He's, uh, he's a very, very top, top man. My brother, he's a good bloke. You know my, who my favourite Warren is? Henry. Absolutely. You love him, didn't you? Henry's the man. Not Thierry Henry. They have, no one's been unleashed with Henry yet. Well, one day, maybe. Yeah, just... Uh, he, he, he's the, the, the Warren member that hasn't actually anything to do with boxing, correct? Yeah, Henry, uh, Henry works for Input Media. And uh, my sister's a florist. Oh, yeah. It's the, you know, all, the, all sorts of different things. Yeah? Yeah. Is that where you get your Valentine's Day flowers? No, because my missus is a florist as well. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you need any, let me know. Uh, I've got two options. But um, we've... Uh, yeah, we, I'm trying to get Henry involved with them, um, hopefully with a bit of total combat, when, uh, when we get going with that again. Um, we uh, Obviously, we filmed at the end of January, and uh, it was broadcast on BT and Box Nation in March. And um, we've been toying with the idea of doing some more studio shows or... Um, um, but you know, we've 
We're going to have, have an announcement within the next three or four weeks about where that's going next. It's definitely not gone away. Um, it's gone, might have gone a bit quiet, but it's um, will be uh, big news we've got with it and what we're going to do with it. And um, a few tweaks, obviously, that have been made to the to the first edition of it. There was a few bits and pieces that I would to, wanted to improve upon. Um, you know, as is, you know, any any launch of any new business is going to you know have a few tweaks, add things, take things away. Um, we've taken a lot of the comments that we got tweeted, only the positive ones. Though. Um, no, you know, a lot of the comments on Twitter were, you know, we got great feedback. You know, obviously, you get the usual idiots who slag, it, who slag anything off, who slagged off, you know, slag off the fight of the century. But um, you know, they they get disregarded. But the the comments from people that, are, are you know, are, 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 what's the word? Right? Constructive criticism. Take that on board. Um, I thought the fighters had equipped themselves very well in the first edition, Total Combat. Connor Stewart looks like a, a guy who can really fight. Tom Ansel, the young lad who broke his rib, unfortunately, in the first round in, this, um, in, the, well, in, the, in the quarterfinal, um, but won this fight. I thought he looked um, very, very handy. So we're you know, looking forward to the next development for that. We're going to get Helder in there, I think. What held it in the ring? Yeah, I think I think we should do a, a combat off with held in you. Do do total combat the journalist tag team edition. So me and I think Helder, I prefer to see total wipeout from that. <laughs> that'd be quite good, wouldn't it? So me and Helder get someone from like seconds out, be real TV, all the other. I tell you, I tell you, we could do we could do Helder and um, who's that? Who's that lad from your call? <laughs> No, no, no. Go on. Yeah, we can do that one. We'll keep you still on that one. I think they've sorted it out now, anyway. Oh, they're all chums again. Chums now. again. Old half day Helder. Helder's become free quarter day now. Is he? Plus. Is he up to his money, though? No. <laughs> You're losing a bit of timber. You're training. Getting there. I don't know. It's must fine, be, must be the love of a beautiful woman, mate. That's what it must be. Possibly is. Possibly is. Yeah. All right, Francis, listen, thank you very much for talking to IFL Absolute TV. Pleasure, mate. And uh, I'll hopefully catch up with you. Um, hopefully by the time this goes out, Gavin Welsh will be... Gavin, Gavin, <laughs> Gavin, Gavin Reese. <laughs> Gavin Welsh. Gavin Reese will, yeah, will be English. Yeah. All right, listen, thanks for talking to us. And, pleasure, uh, mate. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Right, cheers, mate.